Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to episode number 50 <clears throat> of the Note Closer Show. We are uh, excited. It is Wednesday. It's hump day. And we know what day it is. It's hump day. Uh, today, Wednesday, we have a our third note draft release today at 2 o'clock Central Time, about 31 assets. And um, we're going to speak this up a little bit differently than what I've done in the last two. I'll probably spend a little bit more time in the spreadsheet going through some of the deal structures and stuff like that. Uh, of what to expect based on the servicing notes that are provided for people. So we've got reserve pricing on all 31 uh, for the most part. Some of the prices I think are a little high based on the seller. Probably need to come down a few of them. But uh, we're looking for some bids on those by Friday morning. Now the good thing is if you're part of the mastermind or already registered for it, you would have gotten the list already, which we sent that out last night. So you've got a little bit of a head start. <clears throat> we've got about 100 and We'll probably have about 110 right now registered. We'll probably have closer to 2, 250 on the webinar today, which is always great. Uh, going through, breaking down the assets, and doing one at a time. But today's topic, today's topic is what's your model? What's your business model? And I had a good conversation back and forth with an email with a good buddy of mine yesterday about how uh, we were talking about a few of our mutual friends online who don't know, have, don't have a clue on what their business model is. And so it's hard to help people when somebody doesn't have a clear and, and concise message of what they're focused on. So, <clears throat> as you all know, we're the note, note guys. We close notes. So ladies are focused. That's what we talk about. Hey, here's what we do. Here's another note deal. Here's another note deal. Okay, you don't see me going, oh, hey, here's a rent-to-own deal, or here's a owner finance deal, or here's an REO deal. Don't do that. Now, one of the things I have noticed over the last week and a half is I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, especially during downtime, 10, 15 minutes, because I'm, I'm expanding my database a little bit more, uh, a little, well, a lot differently this year, not traveling as much. So my goal <clears throat> is to replace the contacts I get by harvesting the online um, you know, LinkedIn contacts and then other things that we do with as far as text messaging and also some Facebook stuff. But it's amazing as I'm, I'm focused on real estate investors, people deal with short sales, people that have notes, in their de description of their LinkedIn profiles. And it's always interesting to see people that have like, I do, I do 12 things. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't do 12 things, okay? You may do one, two things okay, the rest you probably suck at. And I mean that, Jennifer's over here laughing, <laughs> Because I'm straightforward, right? There's no like, just right, to the point. right to the, the straight uppercut to the chin. You suck. You suck. <laughs> all right. Because otherwise, you're full of. Exactly. Okay. Uh, you have to be focused on one thing. Now, I'll give you an example. Some people that are focused, the most focused out there, are the most successful people. Uh, this weekend, we talked about a book on the virtual note buying for dummies workshop called Outward and Devil. I got a copy of it here. It's written by Napoleon Hill, okay? And was rewritten by Sharon Lecter just a few years ago, but it was originally written in 1938, but never released. <clears throat> um, if you've never read this book, you need to go buy this book. It is an amazing book, because uh, what it is, is basically Napoleon Hill having a conversation interviewing the devil. And the reason they weren't releasing it, his wife wouldn't let him release it because he thought it was too controversial. And Napoleon is asking the devil on this, <clears throat> whether it's in his mind or, theory, you know, not, for, I don't think physically, <laughs> but in his mind, what makes the devil most successful? And what makes the devil most successful is causing successful people to drift, causing us to focus on multiple things versus really being laser focused. Because if, if you're the most laser focused person, you get the most accomplished. Are we good over there? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Okay. Keep going. So if you can't go out and read the book, because it, that's where most people suffer is they drift. And why they drift is that it's, you've heard shiny object syndrome. You've heard, you know, squirrel. Squirrel! Yeah, Natalie Patton just said stop chasing squirrels. Exactly. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> <clears throat> but that's what you see online. <clears throat> you see a lot of people who are chasing multiple squirrels. A man who chases two rabbits catches none. All right? Little Russian proverb, I guess, or Chinese proverb, whatever. It's a proverb, okay? So what you have to realize is when you start putting out different things, you're doing this stuff, it literally just sounds like this. Okay? One more time. Oh, that one got a little crazy there, all right? Oh, did I just break it? The blah, blah, blah just ended? Oh, 
<laughs> Damn it. Oh, I turned it off excellently. There we go. <clears throat> I know you guys are loving this morning. We're fired up this morning, okay? You are on a roll. I'm on a roll this day. I went to bed early and woke up early. Um, <clears throat> you have to be focused, okay? If your focus is to buy and then turn around and rent and then owner finance is an extra strategy for cash flow, that's completely fine. Just be focused. Now, if you're focused on one thing that's a dying, <clears throat> really a dying breed, like if, I, I have to say this, but if you are like an old short sale negotiator, you are working way too hard to make money in this business. You should be on the note side, honestly, if you're into short sales and lo uh, loan modification, stuff like that. You quit doing that stuff, come over to the note side. It's the same thing but a whole lot more profitable and a whole lot less dramatic, all right? But it also comes down, there's a lot of people that want to speak <clears throat> out there. So they speak on a multitude of different things. You can't really speak as an expert on multiple topics because you're, if you are doing multiple topics, you're not really an expert. You may have some knowledge in what you do and may have a little bit of experience, but you're really not a true knowledgeable person. It's like the person who buys one deal and then decides to write a book and a training program about that one deal. That's bullshit, sorry. <laughs> Exactly. Take precaution. Take precaution, exactly. Run from that person because they really don't know what's going on. Be advised. It's a bullshit word. <laughs> DEF CON 5 sometimes. So I'll give you an example. At the Quest All Pro event, uh, you know Quincy and Nathan and know self-directed IRAs. That's what they focus on. They're not going out and doing retirement funds for uh, mutual funds and other things. They're focused directly on self-directed IRAs. My buddy Jason Bible, who I will be on his radio show come Friday morning, on uh, Right Path Real Estate Radio. You can catch him at KTEK 1100 AM, I believe is the website, <clears throat> and from nine to 10. Uh, it was very focused on home buying, right? Houston house buyers. Bought about 300 homes in the last two and a half years. Jason and I have had a conversation, and I even talked with Tom. They would love to get in notes because they see the opportunity, they see what's going on, but they've got such a machine just cranking out. It doesn't make sense for them to literally jump ship and start something new. It would take away their focus. So, I and I only talk about this today because I was one of those <laughs> people years ago trying to do a multitude of things. All right, I was wholesaling. I was doing some rentals. I was doing some short sales. I was fixing and flipping. I wasn't having the most amount of success because I was all over the place. Now, of course, I was like many real estate entrepreneurs trying to make a buck, just trying to do something. I was wholesaling, like I said, just trying to make money and survive. And I know a lot of people fall into that <clears throat> because it's easy. Oh, I want to do this. I, I want an opportunity. And there's a, uh, I would say, I won't say guru, but there's so many teachers. Oh, there's 12 different ways to make money in real estate. There's a presentation every month. Oh, 12 different ways to make money in real estate. And I think that's the worst thing that you can do. Because what happens is you get everybody thinking about, oh, I'm going to do a deal and do it 12 different ways. No, you're really not going to do it 12 different ways. Yes, I know it's great to know how to make money in different things, but if you were to take your time and focus on what's the most productive deal, you've heard the 80-20 Parento, 80% 80 of your profit is made on 20% of your activities. If you were to take 100% of your time or 80% of your time and focus on that 20, your income would skyrocket by basically 400%. And that's what happens. I see people struggle because it's also the theory of unfinished bridges that I talk about. People try to do different things, so they start things, but they never finish because they got to go to something else. Okay? So what's your model? Is it going to be first? Is it going to be seconds? Is it going to be apartments? Is it going to be REOs? Is it going to be hotels? Is it going to be owner finance notes? I don't care what it is. You just are doing not only yourself a disservice, <clears throat> but the people around you, your family a disservice, because you are all over the place, okay? And if you talk about getting all this business done in the morning and, oh, I got all these cash buyers, I got all these landlords and stuff like that, but you never show pictures of your deals, never show checks, are you getting upset and sharing that you're upset because you're still working at a regular W-2 job? You are full of... Oh, come on now, that ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Exactly. Oh. Yeah, these are right on cue today. I'm loving it. <laughs> um... You're just really t talking out your ass, all right? And that's why you're not successful. If you are, let me give you guys some examples. If you're, you're supposed to be an entrepreneur, real estate investor, but you post more pictures about your pets, your food, and you at the gym, 
you might not be an investor. This is a whole like Jeff Foxworthy thing I could do right now. <laughs> if you are constantly p posting photos of cash and cars, but they're not your own, you might not be you might not be a real estate investor. Okay, you might be full of horseshit. All right, <clears throat> sorry about the the language this morning, but it is. I'm just re really passionate. Because I had a buddy reach out to me, hey, thanks for helping me. I'm like, great, but hey, you should focus on this. I see you all over the place. You're all over the windshield like a windshield wiper on a rainy day. All right? You got to cut down the crap. You got to cut down all the noise. You got to pull out an AR automatic rifle and start just pumping hot lead into all those squirrels. You got to be the Davy Crockett of squirrel shit killers. Okay? Because if you do that <clears throat> and you focus on one thing and you give your attention to that one thing, you focus on your marketing being that one thing, you focus on deal flow and how to develop leads or how to find deals or how to connect with people in that one field, you're going to find happiness, you're going to find a lot more success, and ultimately, you're going to make a whole lot more money because you have a, a locked down tight business model. Questions? Yes. Uh, Christine Crow. Well, yep. asks, when thinking about developing a business model, sometimes it's hard to figure out a niche when you aren't really sure which area is most beneficial. Yep. Thoughts about what would be best for a newbie to start for you, from your experience? Great question. This is where you seek counsel versus advice. <clears throat> Everybody uh, will give you advice, but advice comes from people that are not in that business model or they're not in the thing. So seek counsel. Call the people that are most successful that you admire. in the Because... What you will find is most of the most successful people are going to be the most open to helping because most of the most successful people have had somebody along the way to help them out. And they're the most giving of their time. They want to help you succeed. They want to help you do that. They don't want you to spend six years making mistakes. They want you to have a steep learning curve of success where it's zero to 60 days instead of zero to six months or six years. All right. So if you've got a couple of things you're focused on, pick up the phone and call somebody. Somebody who's expert, somebody you admire, somebody who's going to shoot you straight. Because the last thing you want to do is somebody just to blow smoke up your ass, right? Can we agree to that? Yes? Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Uh, because if you still try to do too many things, you're going to end up being very... I'm so sorry. Sorry at what you're doing. Because you're going to end up wasting time, wasting resources, and not accomplishing the things that you do. Hopefully that makes sense. What else have we got? Good question. Uh, other questions, comments? Yeah. Other comments. Uh, Peter O'Donnell, uh, he said, if you prefer to listen to the recording of Outwitting the Devil, it's on YouTube. Uh, Cody said, come over to the note side, resistance is futile. <laughs> um, That's good, Cody. She, oh, Christine also commented back, she said, no smoke blowing. No smoke blowing, yeah. exactly. <clears throat> One of the best things, guys, that you can do is. Uh, if you're struggling with a couple different things, is, is go talk to your uh, the president of your local real estate investment association. Now, hopefully they're doing deals, all right. Um, hopefully it's not just. Hopefully they would know some experts on, in different fields. Like if you're a hard money lender, great, or private lender, you're broking private money, or you're, um, um, yeah, you're you're doing REOs. Look, I get being focused. Okay, the, just the one thing. One thing to keep in mind is if you're working full-time you really don't have the capacity to do two or three or four things you really got to just focus on one thing and <clears throat> for a lot of us success doesn't happen fast enough that's why we jump around you know that's why we uh, you know jump up jump up and get down you know jump around uh, because we want success and we get excited about it oh this hasn't been working for me let me move on to something else or that's not working for me let me move on to something else you really have to give something Really, to build a habit, it takes 66 days, not 21 days to build a habit. So you really have to give something your focus. Now, don't get me wrong. There are plenty of shysters out there teaching crap that doesn't work anymore. People that teach stuff that's two, three years old. And so the important thing is to ask, when was the last deal you closed? When was the last deals you closed? Because that's important to know. If somebody is teaching something that was good two, three years ago, it's not going to be relevant in what's going on in today's market. Okay. Other questions, comments, Nicole? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Now would be a good time for you guys to write any questions down, anything you're struggling with. Yeah, that's what I put in the comments. <clears throat> See, this is awesome. <laughs> I love it. You guys could run this. I should just do, let you guys do this one day. You could be, oh, that would be kind of a cool, the whole minion panel. We have a little, low battery. Low battery? I want to know what we see. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so that's today's, guys. <clears throat> More importantly, if you're struggling, 
making money, if you're struggling uh, with getting deals closed, look at what you're spending your time on. If you're doing a multitude of things and you're not sharing, you're probably confusing your audience, okay? Now, one of the best things that you guys can do to start off with is let's put together an executive summary. <clears throat> so I have a sample executive summary. Can you see it okay? Push that way. There you go. All right. And what it is, an executive summary <clears throat> basically tells exactly what you do. Now, you don't want this to be 12 pages long. An executive summary should be one page. With your resume. It, it is kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like a resume, but it's just, this is a short, sweet, abridged version. Okay? It's the cliff notes of what you do. So like this one, says, in, we're Texas-based real estate investment and education. We're specializing in buying and selling distressed and toxic assets. That's exactly what we focus, focus on. No REOs. <clears throat> distressed notes, okay? Uh, for primarily on the purchase of non-performing first mortgages on residential and commercial properties across the United States in the 50 largest metroplexes. All right, our strategy is to buy at a fraction and, and refinance it. <clears throat> then we all talk a little bit on the education side, which all I teach on is notes, all right? We have a little bit of marketing, but that comes in with what we're talking about. So we're very focused here, okay? So that's what an executive summary is. Talks a little bit about your business, your, your, your game plan, your model, and then a paragraph or two on you or the principles of the company. And it's okay to put your smiling face, okay? Put your logo on it so it brands you. You'd be surprised how many people have never put together an executive summary. Now, a thing about an executive summary is there's always two pages and the back side <laughs> is always the least utilized thing on a flyer. So what like I like to do is I like to put pictures of the mastermind groups. Another thing we've done is seeing people, and I think it's good, put deals, closed deals on there, pictures of the properties. It's not that hard. Spend a little money, you know, this may cost you $1.50 to print up each one, but it's well worth it. It becomes a business card. It becomes something that really separates you from everybody else who just is running around with a crappy business card with their photo on it, okay? We have a question. Christine, she asks again, where did you originally start and how is it different from today? Um, okay. <clears throat> I originally started as a mortgage banker. I was working for a couple years after college. I was a cell phone salesman and financial advisor and then a mortgage banker. And then <clears throat> I always wanted to be into finance. After I got out of the cell phone job, which I was the number one sales guy in all of Texas for Verizon for a while, um, I loved the finance. I loved numbers. Even though I didn't study finance in college, it was a marketing and uh, management degree, <clears throat> I knew I wanted to go to the finance side. And my buddy who started a mortgage company met with me. I came on a board. Uh, we started this mortgage company, and we were hooked up with a couple investors and educators who were teaching owner financing, creative financing, but they were also doing fix and flips. And now they were good doing some great stuff, but they were also pretty across the board. Uh, they focused more on, on owner financing wraparounds and then simultaneous closes than the distressed uh, institutional debt. But I learned theory from them, and when everything hit the fan, I was prepared in 2008, 2009 to stop doing the mortgages, to stop doing short sales and other fix and flips, and I jumped head first into note investing because I had to come to Jesus meeting with my business partner at the time. Like, hey, you're all over the place, Scott, doing different things. So not really a business partner at the time, but friend, what's gonna be the best thing for you to focus on? What would be the one thing that if you really put everything behind it, <clears throat> you make the most amount of money? And it wasn't an easy conversation. It wasn't an easy time because for a period of about six months, I was stopped making money in other things and I focused on the note business and things got pretty tight. Got really tight. It's divorced. Um, and so it was just me and Princess and Mr. Bill the cat when he was around. Um, Mr. Bill, oh, great tabby. Princess. <clears throat> the note princess. Yes, the note dog. Uh, but at um, made a couple of deals happen, sold a, a note, made 35 grand on it, uh, sold some other individual deals and was off and running on that. And that's when I focused on it. And I was like, yes, I have to be focused on that. This is all I'm going to do. I had the belief in me, the belief in me. Um, when others didn't believe. My ex-boss, <clears throat> I guess you say, that got it, mentored me, didn't believe I could do what I did. And sometimes that's all you need is somebody to tell you, oh, you can't do that. Um, it's basically, oh, you can't do that. Somebody else can do that, but you can't. Oh, that pissed me off. Did you say in your face? Uh, I did, basically, <laughs> a couple years later, because the guy's no longer in the industry. Um, no longer in the industry. When I showed up to an event that he was actually teaching at, he was using deals that I closed, promoting them as his. That was basically the biggest thing. Because he's like, oh yeah, we'll flip past that deal, flip past that deal. I'm like, yeah, I recognize those deals. Those are mine. Those are mine, not yours. Uh, Laura Blank, 
uh, has, she says, I have a source of tapes. What is the best way to find actual note buyers instead of a million tire kickers? LinkedIn. You know, this is the biggest thing. Have, see what people have done. See what's on their profile. Have them send you an email with their LinkedIn connection. Because you'll be able to tell a lot. Like I saw a guy last night who says, rehabber on his LinkedIn profile. He's got a dirty picture. He's like, oh, I'm so amazing. I got all these pools. I'm like, no, you really don't have pools. You have crappy pools that don't have anything good in them. You got a bunch of joker brokers trying to pass around deals, and that's part of the problem. So if you're looking for real deals, you want to go to note-specific groups. Um, you maybe want to send them either list. I tell you if they're real or not real. If they're real lists or not. Uh, that's the last thing you want to do is be another ch a link in the daisy chain of crap. So you can drop me an email at scott at weclosenotes.com if you're interested. And we'll be glad to take a look on there. I have plenty of deals we're working on. We got another borrower, or another lender that sent us, what, 80-plus assets? 87. 87. He's another tape this morning. Okay. Okay. We got this tape this afternoon of the Patriots that we're moving of 31 assets. We got another 200 assets with servicing information. Greg's been working on that. You Actually, you all have been working on that. Yeah. yeah. That's for next week. So I got plenty of deals that we're moving for our, our own database and different things. So you can use LinkedIn, but you can also jump on different Facebook, like note-specific groups. You could jump on um, LinkedIn. There's note-specific groups on there, note investors. That would be the better way versus dealing with a bunch of tire kickers. Or ask them, what have you closed lately? That's hashtag, what have you closed lately? So maybe ask, hey, who have you bought from? And have you bought a note before? Or are you just full of... Exactly. Okay. What other questions? That's it. We had so, pretty good questions today. Great questions today, guys. I think it was a good subject matter for you. It's our 50th episode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, boy, time flies. All right. When did we start this? you remember when we first started? It was before in November, December? I want to say it was in October. It was October, I think. Something else. It was October. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Okay. Before I was around. So it was it was uh, <laughs> PG pre Greg. <laughs> so guys, uh, if you haven't joined us, <clears throat> haven't signed up for the uh, webinar at two o'clock today, go ahead and do that. That way you'll be see what we do breaking down deals and marketing, and helping you guys get more deals closed, us get more deals sold. Christine asked another comment. Uh, asked another question. She said, "I was getting ready to buy a note of my own from you. What's the range of cost to jump in?" Range of cost to jump in. Well, you're going to have what I always oh, like to... Yeah, I'm sorry. 10K, 50K, a range would be cool. If as far as the well, cost, if you're going to buy an individual note, most of the time you're going to see individual note deals, one-offs can be somewhere between you know, ten to 50000 or less. Usually your $50,000 assets are going for twenty five. So what you also want to do is budget in your foreclosure costs as well. Hopefully you wouldn't have that, but foreclosure, deed and loop fees and stuff like that as well as it will range anywhere from like three to five grand per asset depending on the state it's in. So... That's what you want to look at. I mean, that's pretty normal across the board. You know, a lot of one-off deals are going for around twenty-five grand. Add in five grand, so expect to have, need to have you know somewhere between twenty and thirty thousand. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, hey, <clears throat> we look forward to uh, seeing hopefully seeing you guys today at two o'clock. Once again, if you're going to be in the Houston market uh, tomorrow night, I'll be at the Prosperity Real Estate Group at the uh, Marriott Northridge from uh, six thirty to nine thirty tomorrow night, talking on the ten biggest mistakes. And we will be live streaming that, actually, uh, on, uh, on Google Hangout. So look for the link for us to post that later today for you guys. So otherwise, have a great Wednesday. Go make your hump day your bitch and make things happen, everybody. We'll see you guys all at the top.